Did you know the fastest growing type of email sees greater than 1100% increase in conversion rates compared to scheduled campaign emails? And did you know that brands sent nearly as many of these messages in the first half of 2023 as they did all of the year before? And did you know these messages generate the third most number of orders of any automated email trailing only behind welcome and cart abandonment messages? What email am I talking about? Browse abandonment, of course. And not having these messages as a major part of your email and SMS program is a huge mistake. I'm Greg Zakowitz, an e-commerce marketing expert at Sun, an 18-year email geek. And today, I'm going to show you how to use browse abandonment messages to re-engage shoppers and increase your sales. And I'll even show you how to set them up in no time at all. But before we begin, a quick note. Now, too many people still believe that in order to get a lot out of email marketing, they need to pay a lot. And this keeps a lot of great businesses from getting started with email marketing or using it to its potential to transform their business. And it's a myth that OmniSend is busting every single day. So I encourage you to visit OmniSend.com, found in the link below, and find out all of the value OmniSend has to offer, all for a fraction of the cost. All right, let's get to increasing your sales. Okay, first, what is a browse abandonment message? It's quite simple. Think of an online window shopper. Someone's on your website, browsing products, and they leave without placing an item in their shopping cart. How rude. When that online window shopper is identified, an automated message is then sent to the person enticing them to return and hopefully make a purchase. Now this is a browse abandonment message. They're pretty awesome, pretty effective, and pretty easy to create and automate. Kind of like me. When creating browse abandonment emails, there's a couple things you need to remember. Now first, the recipients were on your website, so there's a presumed level of interest and intent. And they weren't compelled enough to make your purchase then, so your messaging should consider what it would take to rekindle their interest. Now these messages are naturally segmented, making them relevant, and that's better than sending a mass unsegmented generic email, so don't be scared about sending them. So before I can show you how to set up your automation, we need to create our amazing messages, so let's do so by looking at a couple of real life examples from real life brands. In this example from 123 Presets, you can see the general direction of the message. The email text is short and reminds the customer that they were viewing products and offers a clear call to action to pick up where they left off. I like how the navigation bar has an option for special offers. This is a great way to encourage price conscious shoppers to continue their browsing. Now below, they provide a couple of product options before also including a bundle and save section. Now sections like this are great because it does two things. One, they expose the reader to additional products they may catch your eye. And two, they instantly make the shopper feel like they were about to get more while saving money. Finally, they end the email with social proof, which you all know I love. Now they mention the number of reviews, which establishes trust in the brand and products, which can be an obstacle to conversion. Now they reinforce it with an image and a quoted customer testimonial. Now to me, this is a great browse abandonment message because it acknowledges and engages the shopper based on previous behavior. It suggests a variety of products without being overwhelming. And it mentions savings in both the nav bar and the email itself with bundle and save options. And finally, it uses social proof. Let's look at a few more examples and approaches and talk about why I like them. Now, each of these examples follows the product abandonment model, which is where you include a specific product the shopper was viewing in the email itself. Now, this first example from Bowties of Vermont. The language is remindful, but also direct. They followed up by creating a sense of urgency by saying all the products are in limited quantities and then reinforced their trusted and quality nature of the business and products. Now they show the image, description, price, and include a call to action. This next example from Bowie Made takes me back. Oh, so cute. They use a hero image at the top followed by some brief text that offers first name personalization, which is a nice touch, but not necessary but then make an offer for email help should they need, which reinforces their commitment to human touch and customer satisfaction. Now they include the image of the product with the call to action, but then add a recovery section below that links to all of their onesies. Now what I like about this is that if I had moved on from my original product, the message would still have value because it links me to other similar products. By the way, if you've ever had a child, don't you just miss this age? OMG, I want another one, but just to borrow. Let's be clear, just a bar. And this final example comes from Thoughtful Collection. And it's more of a straightforward approach. They have brief verbiage, but do mention the products are in stock, which does create my all-too favorite sense of urgency. You're, you're catching on. 
Like the others, they show a specific product I was viewing and include a call to action in the shop. Now, as you can see, there are countless ways to create an effective and engaging browse abandonment message. So regardless of whether your abandonment strategy focused more generically on a category of products or specific products, I recommend including the following elements in each message. One, call to action. Two, links to a product or category as well as links to alternate products or alternate categories. Three, brief verbiage, preferably with a sense of urgency. And you can even combine this with a limited time discount if you really want to close the sale. Four, social proof such as star ratings, number of reviews, accuracy of fit, and testimonials. And five, any company value as a matter to shoppers, such as free shipping, return policies, and available customer service. Now, four things I haven't discussed are email subject lines, the number of messages, whether to use SMS, and what makes a good SMS message. But don't worry, I'm gonna cover these as I walk through how to set up your browse abandonment automation, which by the way, is super simple. Let's dig in. Now for setting up automation, we're gonna be using OmniSend, which is a platform used and trusted by over 100,000 brands. So you know it's amazing too. When you log in OmniSend, click on the automations in the top navigation. Now from here, we're gonna click on new workflow in the upper right corner. Now you can choose to create one from scratch by clicking create from scratch. However, OmniSend makes it even easier by providing pre-built workflow templates. So click on browse abandonment on the left side and you'll see multiple options. Now you'll also see options for both product abandonment and browse abandonment. I already mentioned the difference between targeting based on specific products or category of products. So we'll choose browse abandonment as it will give us the largest possible market. But don't worry, you can actually change this at any time regardless of the option you choose. As you can see, the template is virtually ready to roll. The trigger rule at the top is preset to when a shopper views a page on your website, but you can toggle this to viewed product at any time. Now to set up the rest of the trigger, you want to customize who you are targeting. Now in this instance, let's just say when the URL contains shoes. A default workflow exit condition is when a shopper places an order, and this is exactly what you want. Now there's also an audience filter option if you want to be more selective with who enters the workflow. This isn't necessary, and we'll ignore this for now. Finally, you'll see a frequency setting at the bottom, which gives us the ability to throttle customers who have previously entered the workflow. Now this is fine for now, but you may want to change this to a longer window in case you're worried about people constantly coming back but not purchasing. Again, how rude. Now you can see we have a default of a two hour delay between leaving the site and being sent an email. Now you can edit the delay by clicking the node and adjusting the time as you see fit. Now you're safe as early as 30 minutes to as long as 24 hours. Now myself, if I were sending only an email, I'd send the first one in one to two hours but I'll come back to this. Our next questions will be how many messages do we send and do we add another channel like SMS? Let's explore. First, SMS and email are like PB&J. Strong alone, beautiful together. For browse abandonment, I like two emails and an SMS, but feel free to be as creative as you'd like. So assuming two emails and an SMS, let me build out a workflow with what I see as a good starting point. I'll need to add messages to the workflow, so I'll just drag and drop the appropriate notes from the left rail onto the canvas. But don't worry about how it looks, we can continue to drag them around as need be. So in sending an SMS, I like to send it as quickly as possible, around 30 minutes, but I've personally received some in as little as 15 minutes and I was fine with it. So I'll change the initial delay to 30 minutes here. Now, anyone signed up for my SMS program will receive an SMS. For anyone not opted in, they simply skip right on by. And because of this, I'm gonna add another 30 minute delay after the SMS. Now an SMS subscriber will receive an SMS at 30 minutes and everyone will receive an email at one hour. Now I wanna add a second email to the workflow. So I'm going to add a delay of 23 hours and then send another email. Now you can drag an email node from the rail onto the canvas, but you can also copy a previous one. And I'll do that here. I'll clone it and then drag it to where I want. Now I have my workflow. Now, if you wanna send a final reminder via SMS to those recipients, nothing is stopping you. Just be sure to test out the number of messages and timing of them and adjust your program as necessary. Now, we have our workflow, but have not yet edited our messages. So let's walk through this real quick and we'll go right down the workflow. First, we have our SMS message. Click on the node and you'll see the editing options appear. Now, what should your message say? Here are a few SMS examples to draw inspiration from. Now, both messages are short and sweet. The fig pit example conveys a sense of urgency in the message, while the Inglot example points people to popular products, a form of social proof we all know I love. In each case, you can see the brand name is clear and upfront. I'd recommend this and create a short message however you see fit linking back to your site. 
beyond that, the world is really your SMS oyster. Now let's edit the message content. To do so, click on the message node. You'll see the editing options to the right. The subject line and preheader are right here. So feel free to get creative with the subject lines, but I would make either the subject line or preheader obvious that it is something based on their browsing behavior. So here's a few examples to get your wheels turning. Now, if you need help thinking of subject lines, OmniSend offers a free subject line generator available to anyone, and they can be found at omnisend.com slash subject dash line dash generator, which is also linked in the video description. So be sure to head on down and check it out. Now to edit the content itself, click edit content just below. From here, you'll be brought to a drag and drop message editor where you can customize the message however you see fit. Now you can make the message more of a catch all hero image, or if you want to feature the abandoned products, click on the quick add button on the left and scroll down to abandoned products option and drag it into your email. Now by default, we include all product details in the message, such as image, name, price, and description, but you can easily toggle these off in the builder by clicking on the abandoned products in the right rail, navigating the product details, and then toggling the choices you wish. While here, you can see the ability to customize the layout, number of products shown, columns, and anything else you may want. Now, as you're creating your messages, don't feel the need to take an all or nothing approach. Feel free to optimize as you go. Once you're finished, click finish editing. When you're ready to activate your workflow, click start workflow and watch those sales roll in. Now, come on, how easy was that? Online window shoppers may browse on buy, but that doesn't mean they're not interested. Browse abandoned emails convert 1000% better than standard campaigns because people are interested. So don't give your shoppers a chance to be wooed by your competition and start sending targeted, relevant browse abandoned emails and SMS today. Remember what I said, too many people still believe that in order to get a lot out of email marketing, they need to pay a lot. And this is a myth that OmniSend busts every single day. As you've seen today, OmniSend is a powerful email and SMS marketing platform trusted by over 100,000 brands, contains a suite of features made to help any brand increase your sales, offers 24 seven, 365 live support, and not to mention is less expensive than those other guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want even more great e-commerce content, check out this video right here. Until next time, happy marketing everyone.